Oh, I'm worried, boys. My neck have gone off. Like a titanium rod, it is. Your mum's still unhappy, is she fake? Aye. Staring out the window, she was. Crying and blowing her nose in my old shirt. Oh, heartbreaking it is, boys. Maybe she feels unwanted because you've been spending too much time with me and Hoffman teaching us the trade and that. No, she's been <laughs> happy as a bird since you two moved in, man. Apart from being chronically depressed. <laughs> no, no, it's not that. Maybe she's dying, but... <laughs> you don't say that, man. What would I do if my mum died? Never seen her little old face again? Well, maybe you could keep her in, in like an old chair, like in sight corner. Maybe it's an old chair. Ah, you could talk to her. She'd be dead, man, Charlie. Norman Bates done it. He used to answer himself and all in like an old woman's voice. Is he the bloke who does the milk ground for the co-op? Huh. No, Norman Collier, he is. He's a funny bugger at all, man. <laughs> Will you two shut up? My mum is clinging on to life by her fingertips upstairs and all you can do all is go on about keeping her bloody corpse about the place, man. I want her alive, man, not a rotten monstrosity. You boys haven't got no respect, man. You'll be suggesting we have a stuffed next like a bloody parrot. <laughs> I expect she just needs an operation, but... Operation? No, man. All I'll do is stick her on a waiting list and call her up when she's already dead. <laughs> We'd have to go private. What oh, the cost, but... Maybe we could get lottery money. No, they only give you lottery money if you're an opera house or a lesbian, man. <laughs> Maybe she needs a transplant, a new liver or something. A new you? They do grow them now on the back of a mouse. I've seen it on tomorrow's world. <laughs> a little mouse running round with like a big you grown on his back. <laughs> Will you stop talking rubbish, man? My mum's old. She'd need new bits for nearly all of her. <laughs> we can't have a mouse running round the house with a brand new mum on its back. <laughs> They couldn't stand up anyway. It'd have to be the size of a pig pony to turn her weight. <laughs> Talk bloody sense, man, will you? <laughs> eh? Maybe she got seasonal affected disorder, figure says you're about it. People do get it when it's winter. George Clooney do have it, and he lies in bed and cries and all, just like your mum. That's January's magazine, that is. It's not winter now, is it, man? It's spring. George will be up and about then. <laughs> Stop sick, man. It's April. That's what's wrong with her. It's mum and dad's wedding anniversary on April the 28th. Ah. Oh, she's sad, see, boys, thinking about my dad. Oh, thank God for that. I'll make her a nice cup of tea, take it up to her and give her a cuddle. Ugly bugger Clooney, isn't he? <laughs> I'd cry and all if I had a face like that. <laughs> mum? My dearest darling Elsie. Oh, the letter from my dad. April 1953. <laughs> I was just thinking about the last time we got together when you... Mm. <laughs> I cannot hardly wait to hold you in my arms again and kiss your beautiful lips. Endless love, your own and Irene. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Oh, there's romantic. And Irene? Who oh, the bloody hell's an Irene? <laughs> Richard. Oh, ma'am, what's this? Well, you found out now. Found out what? Who's, who's an Irene? Sit down, son. I don't want to sit down. It was 1953, coronation year. Your poor dad was in hospital in Newport. A special hospital for people who'd had their stomachs jumped up and down on by the Japs in the war. <laughs> He'd been there a long time. And somehow I found happiness in the arms of another. Another what, ma'am? Another man, son. Oh? Uh? Yes. The Japs jumped up and down on your dad's stomach. And Nairin Snoddy jumped up and down on mine. <laughs> No! Not the Anirin Snoddy, the famous cat burglar. Yes, Anirin the cat, they used to call him. He was a legend in Port Albert, he was. Still is. Oh, he was a good-looking man, like Cary Grant smoked a pipe. Women were mad for him. They used to leave their windows open. 
and sit waiting on their balconies in the spring night air, wearing only diaphanous silk negligees and their diamonds and pearls, in the hope that he would enter in search of their valuables and take advantage of them. Oh, poor Talbot have changed a lot since then, ma'am. Yeah. But, but, but what about that, ma'am? Oh, I know. I felt awful guilty, and so did a Nairin. It was the 1st of May. Bridge on the River Kwai was on the telly and I was suddenly overwhelmed with guilt. I woke an iron up and told him it had to end. Oh, it is a long film, I. <laughs> I sent him away, never to return. I'm sorry, son. I'm sorry, but I can't honestly say I regret it. I loved your dad, but he couldn't, you know... Not often, anyhow. <laughs> and I was young. It was May Day. And every May Day since then, all he left behind was a woolwork vest. I found it later all tangled up in the sheets. It was all I had left of him. <laughs> it still smells of his ready rubbed. <laughs> oh, Mum! Mum! <laughs> Oh, This has come as a huge shock to me, boys. My mum and a nairin snoddy. All these years and I never knew. My mum used to charge for it. Still does, probably. But you can't compare your mum to my mum, man. Why not? Well, your mum's a prostitute, isn't she? I see your point. Mind you, Julia Roberts was a prostitute and all. Aye, but she didn't have a hench back, did she? My mum didn't either. That was a frozen shoulder that I wasn't waving at cars. <laughs> the fact is, my dad and me was betrayed, right? He wasn't born, was you? No, but... When was it, Fig? When your mum and Snorty were at it, like... Spring 1953. When was you born, Fig? January 1954. <laughs> oh, no. It's possible, but... No way, man. No bloody way. You look like Snoddy. No, nothing like him. I look exactly like my dad. Except for my face, like. <laughs> he used to sit me in front of the fire and tell me about the draft prison camp. He used to bounce me up and down on his knee. Before he lost his leg, like? <laughs> my dad's my dad, right? Oh, I'm shattered, boys. The very basis of my self-image have been undermined. Who am I? Richard Applewhite. No, no, no. Oh, you are. No, no, I know who I am, and I didn't mean that. I know I'm Richard Applewhite. I meant, I thought I was the issue of an idyllic marriage. But beneath the crumbled topping of that solid working class union bubbled the insidious applesauce of lust. It could have been worse, but at least he was a famous cat burglar. Look, Snoddy's not my dad, and that's the end of the matter, right? Snoddy wouldn't be short of a bob or two, mate. He was big time, money. I bet he'd have a pile stashed away, like. Jewels, diamonds, cash. Huh? Uh, how much do you reckon he's worth, then? Thousands. Maybe more. Tens of thousands. Ah, uh, it's not right, is it? My mum, a respectable married woman, being used by Snoddy as his sexual plaything. And now, years later, my poor old mum haven't got sod all and he's got thousands. I reckon she's entitled to some compensation for having her honour besmirched like... Right enough, but... He could be my father anyhow. You can't say he's not like. You did just now, Fig. Aye, <laughs> aye, uh, uh, but I'm thinking if we could call him as my dad, which he's not, right? But if he thought he was and left me his fortune, I could use it to brighten Mum's riper years. But you said your mum had betrayed your dad and you. Ah, well, betrayed's a harsh word, isn't it? No, no, she was a, a weak, naive woman on her own, like. It's like that film with that tart and that train where you can hear her thinking, like, Cecilia Johnston. 
briefing counters. I seen it on the movie channel. There was this fat posh bloke sitting by the fire doing the crossword all the time. It was bloody rubbish. Brief encounters was where the spaceship lands, isn't it? And that guy from Jaws makes a little little of mashed potatoes. You don't remember that? He might have been in another room, mind. What the hell are you talking about mashed potatoes for? We're onto something big here, boys. It could change our lives. I could combat my agoraphobia. I could have a network of tunnels built from the house to the local amenities. <laughs> to the pictures, to the shop, to the... Well, to the pictures and the shop. <laughs> I could get a sun lamp and one of them electric chairs you to go up and down stairs on. For your mum, is it fake? No, for me. I'm sick and tired of going up and down those bloody stairs. <laughs> mum can use it and all if she wants to, like, and, and you boys can have whatever you want and all. An electric guitar. Drums. I could have a drum kit. We could be a band, but the tea leaves, sex and drugs and rock and roll. <laughs> But first of all, we got a fine snoddy and... Make, make sure he's loaded, innit? Ah, now, I want you boys to find out where he is so we can get him here and check him out, like... If he's still alive, is he? Well, we're not going to dig him up, are we? <laughs> make sure Mum's out. No need to upset her unnecessary. How will we find him, Fig? I know. We could utilise IT technology. Like Mission Impossible, innit? You don't know about computers, eh, Claude? Oh, aye. Yeah. Uh, I've been on a course, see? Three days in Neath. I'm from Neath. You to the muscles from Brussels? He's a thief from Neath. <laughs> ah, right. Here we are. Drugs. Marijuana. Speed. Ecstasy. Night nurse. Very popular with the older people. Uh, cocaine. There's prices there. What about snotty? And what? here's the porn site. I know this one. Erogenous Jones. Oh, the picture of gone, see? You've got to use a credit card if you want to see more. <laughs> Constable Cox. It's all right, Sergeant Ball. We finished. You don't know nothing about the Nairin snotty, do you, Sarge? Ah, yes, a Nairin the cat. Cat burglar. Nice bloke. Hard as granite. Haven't heard nothing about him in years. He had a house in Tonna Pandy, but it was accidentally demolished during a routine police search when he was in stir. He was a famous legend, wasn't he? Well, the best, they reckon. So they say, aye, but you lads don't want to go hero worshipping someone like him. Crime never pays. How much do you reckon he got away with altogether, like? About three million. <laughs> oh, hell. To have a golden chalice waved in front of you and then snatched away. Bloody typical. But didn't they have no trace of Snoddy at all then? No. Nope. Last thing they knew was he got out of Pentonville in 1986. Bloody coppers. Couldn't find a bag of crisps in a pub. <laughs> 1986? I know a bloke who was in Pentonville then. Doug Trulove. Don't ask him. He might know where Snoddy is. Nah, it's complicated though, boss. He, he don't like me. Why not? I murdered his best friend, Dixie. <laughs> that would have done it. Uh, I mean, he wasn't just that, though. It was more my passing comments on his table manners, like. He took offence, like, you know. He vowed to skewer me like a kebab if ever he got hold of me. Me do it, too. He's certifiable, one. In fact, he's been certified. <laughs> he reckoned he had the brain of an 80-year-old woman. And he was right, too. They found it in the boot of his car. <laughs> Where does he know that? He went back to Ferndale. Well, he haven't come after you. Maybe he forgot about you. Yeah, maybe, but I'd be reluctant to put it to the test. No, I, I put the word round the Ferndale area. I was dead. I put it down to that, see? What, think of your mum, Fig. Think of your tunnels, but Think of the money. <laughs> Millions, but Go on, Fig. Mm. Phone him. Oh, well, I, I suppose I could just give him a ring now. Mum's out. Like, dial 141 first, like, so he can't trace the number. <laughs> Clever, Fig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Always one step ahead, see, boys. <laughs> Douglas true love. Hi, hi, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if you remember me, like, but you know your friend Dixie who died? Got murdered, like. Yes. Well, I was the other party in the murder, like. What do you mean? I, 
doesn't it? Richard Hepperwhite. But I, uh, I heard you'd passed on. It was in the local rack. No, I'm still alive, I am. It was a scam, see? Uh, I had the, the second-hand coffin, sir. I put the obituary in myself, Mike. I see. Look, I'm, I'm sorry about murdering Dixie. I never meant to. He just, like, slipped off the roof, like. Oh, that's water under the bridge. Forget it. Hi. Uh, I was wondering if you had a phone number or something for a night in Snoddy. Snoddy? Yeah. I have got that somewhere, yeah. We really should get together, Richard. Chat about old times. I, um, well, I can't leave the house, see, Doug, because of my agoraphobia, like... I could call round. No! I mean, um, it's difficult, see, Doug. I, mean, I, I can't stand even being with people who've been outside in the open, like it's, uh, it's an advanced form of the illness. I can't even eat free-range eggs. Oh, dear. Well, never mind. Ah, here's Snoddy's number. Bridge End. 690-007. Oh, oh, thanks, Doug, but... Eh, uh, no problem. Listen, uh, maybe I could uh, send you some self-hypnosis tapes. What's your address? Uh, no, uh... Oh, th there's someone on the line trying to get through, Blatt. Beep, beep. Uh, I'm expecting a business call, see? Beep, beep. Uh, I'll see you again then, Doug. So long. Ah, got it. He didn't even mention me saying about his eating habits, neither. Rock and roll off rock and roll. Uh, he tried to trick me into giving him my address, mine, but uh, he wasn't born yesterday. I'm so happy, Dixie. He's not dead. Which means I can kill him. All to eat in a room on my own, should I? Iris, Doug, does your Susan still work for the Ferndale Observer? Hey, it's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> a famous person coming to the house, like. Celebrity, like. How nervous I am. What if I talk rubbish? I can feel it all gathering in my head, like... Don't worry, boys. I can handle delicate situations like this, see, because of having had business experience. I've, uh, I've mixed with celebrities before and all, of course. Who? Stan Stennard. <laughs> <laughs> when I was young, like, in Porthcall, it was. He was in the pantomime. I talked to him after, like, by the stage door. Did he keep in touch? No, he must have lost my address. <laughs> hey, it's a car. Oh, it must be snotty. Right, boys, we'll suss him out sharply, see if he is malleable to suggestion like. Now, Mum won't be back from the pictures till ten at the earliest. We'll have him out by then. Leave the talking to me. Elsie Applewhite. Hi, I'm her son. Richard. Richard Applewhite. My son? Hi. She had a baby and it was me. <laughs> but she was such a good-looking woman. <laughs> Where is she now? She's, um... Uh, she's, um... Uh, in hospital. Oh, which hospital? I'd like to visit her. No. No, she can't have visitors. No visitors? What sort of hospital is that, then? Uh... Isolation, it is. Die, the isolation hospital, see? She's got, uh, uh, leprosy. Ah, <laughs> leprosy. What? Ah, uh, she, she, she picked it up from some bananas in pont de Prix market, like, and, uh, uh, and she can't be visited, see, in case it spreads. Like. Well, that's amazing. You see, you would have thought that a pretty young thing like Elsie would have ended up a leper. Ah, <laughs> tragic, isn't it? Ah, but... There you go. <laughs> Just thought you'd like to know, like. Oh, thank you, thank you. Me and Charlie are tea leaves and all, Mr. Snoddy. Ah, they work in for me, see, apprentices, like we sort of uh, ad adopted them. They, they, they was living rough. Oh, it's all rough. When you leave the primrose path, take it from me. 
Still, I bet you made a bobo too when it was on the razzle leg. Oh, money can't give you everything, son. Love, self-respect, a family. Look how I've ended up. A silly old fool always looking over his shoulder. The law is on to me now, I think. Some business recently in Swansea. Catherine Zita Jones is diamond necklace from a posh hotel. It was in a law. Fantastic, but. No, 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 foolish. I shan't be going back inside or whatever. Anyway, Elsie's boy. <laughs> well, I'll be done. Aye, aye. She told me about you, see? You hit me, I suppose. Aye. No, no, no. no. <laughs> well, I would if I were you. Some flash Harry who seduced you a mum while your dad was in hospital? Well. What are you? What are you? It wasn't like that. It was the only time I'd ever been in love. But she was a married woman, see? Romantic, that is. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. She loved you, too. Aye. I'm wearing your vest. <laughs> no, you're not. I'm wearing it. No, not your vest now. Your vest you left behind, tangled up in Mum's bed sheets. She kept it. Ah, uh, you know, I've often wondered where that vest got to. Uh, <laughs> very comfortable, I think. Yeah, things have turned out differently. You could have been my son. <laughs> Well, if I understand my mum right, her voice is a bit croaky, see, oh. but that, that may be how things did pan out, if you get my drift. Well, that's possible, I suppose. Hey, we don't look much alike, though. Well, sometimes they don't, do they? Dads and their sons, like. Very often they don't round you. Aye. So you got my number off Doug True Love, then? Aye. He wants to kill you, don't he, fake? Well, you commented on his eating habits, did you? Aye. Oh, you're lucky to be alive, boy. Aye, yeah. Uh, I murdered his best friend and all. Oh, he's an animal, true love. Huh? I'd watch my back if I were you. Do the deeds tally? Oh, I asked. Some sort of genetic mutation, then? <laughs> well, it's been a wonderful night. You know, I started it as a lonely old man waiting for death, and now, just a few hours later, I might have found a son. The woman I love is alive. A leper, unfortunately. But... <laughs> I mean, all those years, I what I could have given you. Well, I only wish I had a few bob, you know, for my mum, like for her hospital bills. They can't charge, not a leper. <laughs> no, no, it, 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 it's more the little extras, you know, Lucas said. <laughs> Grapes. Pond's cold cream. She do use buckets of that, but... <laughs> Don't do no good, of course, but, uh... Listen, I got some cash. I don't need it. It's in a safety deposit box in a bank in Dothwells. <laughs> Quarter of a million. I'd like you to have it. Me? Yeah, you and the boys. Use it to look after Elsie, make her life easier. Buy her some cashmere clothes so they don't irritate her skin. <laughs> Quarter of a million? Quarter of a million? Amazing! We could go there on Monday. I'm back. <laughs> it's the bomb scare in the pictures. It was those Methodists again. They don't like snuff movies themselves, so they try to spoil everybody else's fun. <laughs> oh, a nightmare. Oh, Elsie. Oh, hell. <laughs> Discovery Channel. Uh, sex over 70 was called. They, they do do it after they have a bath. <laughs> <laughs> Mum and Nairin haven't had a bath. Uh, usually, like, but sometimes they use, like, a little pump. <laughs> a little pump? Well, for the bath water, is it? <laughs> no, for the blokes, winky! <laughs> they can pump it up and smile at each other. Oh, my God, my neck have gone hard. Hey, hey, what was that? What was that? Hey, 
Hey, let's go for a pump in sound. Oh, it's insane, man. I can't take it. My mum, my little old cuddly white dead mum upstairs, banging away like a shit house door. Oh, it's not worth it, boys. Not on a man's in the walls, not worth it. I'm going up there. It's a piece. That's it. The balloon have gone up. Quick, boys, out the garden, throw them lawnmowers off the back wall. Right. It's the law. Let that be a lesson to him. Aye. Mr. Snoddy must have been on the roof the same time as Doug Fig. Aye. Aye. He saved my ass up there, there's no doubt about that. He wasn't my dad, but he was a nice bloke. But now he's gone. He said he'd have to lie low. Aye, he'll be lagging it abroad. Spain, I expect. Oh. I'm sorry, ma'am. Nothing to be sorry for, son, and Nairin got away. It was just lovely we could meet once again, thanks to you. Oh, at least he's all right, Daniel. Aye, money's not everything, is it? No. <laughs> Snoddy didn't mention a bank security box in Bilth Wells, did he, man? No, love. He didn't give you a little key, did he? <laughs> no. He just said to tell you that he was sorry, but he'd be needing the money now himself. I'll never forget it as long as I live. My last magical moments with the Nairi. Oh, ma'am. He looked at me and he said, tell Richard, he'll understand. Then he took me in his arms, kissed me, gazed deep into my eyes and said, Elsie, my neck have gone hard. 